Well, howdy, welcome to services this morning. If you would stand with me, we'll open in song. Hymn 191, if you want to follow along, there is power in the blood. We'll sing the first, second, and the last. believe that today? Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. I am so thankful that we're able to come and worship him. I'm thankful that we're able to sing about the power of his blood because now I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm going to spend eternity with him. So thankful that y'all are here today. Welcome. It's good to see some of you um, that I haven't seen in a little while. It's good to see some family here and just friends. Y'all, I love you, and it's so good to have y'all here to worship with us. And um, uh, Brother Hampton, uh, it's good to have him back after some procedures. Uh, If y'all would pray for Brother Paul Daughtry um, today, uh, just... uh, had a stint. There's a, he's in a very touch and go time right now. He's doing well, but they're having to, his heart muscle is not where it needs to be. Um, so just pray for strength for him. I know that the family would greatly appreciate it. Cinda, my goodness, so good to look out there and see you. Um, uh, we love you. It's good to see your family too, but it's, you look so much better than they do. And I'm, I'm so glad that you're here, all right? Love you, but it's good to see all of y'all. Those of you watching online, it's good to have everybody watching online. Also, y'all, high five, everybody. High five. Love y'all. And I wish I was out there shaking everybody's hand, but it's good to see you. Let's bow together as we ask for the Lord's blessing today. And at this time, uh, or you know what, as soon as I'm done, the kids choir will come up, but let me pray real quick. And um, let's ask for the Lord's blessing on the service. Lord, we love you and thank you for the day today. Thank you for your protection throughout this week. Lord, we're excited about an opportunity uh, to freely come and worship you. Um, Lord, to worship you in song, uh, to be able to pray together, uh, Lord, to be able to, uh, to worship you through tithes and offerings at the end of a service. And Lord, in just a few minutes, as we look in your word, um, the, Lord, I, it, I, what an honor and a privilege um, to be able to, to share, to preach, to teach your word to each person that's here, each person that's watching online. But Lord, today, that's not that um, we would say that we've heard this before, but Lord, today that we would receive it as a message from you. We ask for your blessing today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Just a couple of things where our kids are getting in place. Some of the kids um, are getting in place to sing a song for us in just a moment. Um, I want to recognize somebody else that's here with us. Stephanie, do you mind standing? Um, Stephanie Alderman, uh, one of our missionaries to Togo, Africa. Let's give her a hand. Her family means the world to us, to our church. Uh, started by supporting her mom and dad when they first came by. Uh, been supporting them for several years now, uh, Stephanie, and also her brother. Uh, and supporting uh, both of them as well. Doing a great work over in Togo, Africa. She's home, wants to get back. I should say she's stateside, but wants maybe home is Af- Togo. Um, but um, if y'all would pray for her, one of the situations because of COVID, um, where Togo is not open right now. So she's just looking for the opportunity for the open 
open door for God's timing for her to be able to get back in. Uh, but Stephanie, we love you, and it, I, we appreciate you stopping by and worshiping with us today. Please tell your family hello, and uh, we're praying for your safety, okay? God bless you. Good to see you. Um, also, real quick, while I'm talking missions, last week at the end of the service, we shared a little video about Elizabeth Perdue and um, uh, the, home, the property that they're trying to build. Uh, they're, excuse me, they're tr not trying to build property. Um, the property that they are trying to purchase so that they're able to build a home uh, for the ministry there. Uh, some of you have given to this, but if you would like to give towards the purchase of that property, I invite you to do so today, or you can do it online. Uh, we'll need to send that money so that we can, um, they have a matching uh, fund promise as long as they uh, receive a certain amount by the end of this month. So if you, a little bit time sensitive, but if the Lord leads you to give, uh, you can do that at the end of the service today on an offering envelope, just right, um, Dominican. Republic Project or Elizabeth Purdue, and uh, we'll make sure that it goes towards towards Elizabeth, okay? God bless you. Glad that you're here. And at this time, Lily and uh, Emmy, I know Amanda, you know what? Real quick, Kinsley, can I say something? Is it good? This past Wednesday, y'all, God's so good. Um, through this COVID fun, um, God's at work. We've had several salvations through over the last, I'll just say three, four months. And if it wasn't for my boot, I was telling Brother Moses, we would have, we have a line of people waiting to get baptized, but I can't do it in my boot, so I look forward to that. Um, and, um, but over the last couple of weeks, two to three weeks, we've had three or four people that accepted Christ as their Savior. Little Kinsley right here, Wednesday night after church, comes up walking, <clears throat> after service comes walking, the biggest smile that you have ever seen on a little girl's face. Just comes up and says, Pastor, I got something I want to tell you. I was like, what's that? She goes, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior tonight. Amen. So children's choir workers, thank you all. And I know Amanda had that privilege of being able to talk with her, but I appreciate each one of you and your faithfulness of leading the kids. We look forward to the song, and kids, y'all have fun. Don't worry about anybody, but you're actually singing on YouTube today. Is that your first time? All right, don't be nervous. Their eyes just got real big. They make their way back to their seats. Uh, kids, great job. Appreciate that. Let's all stand together. Parents, make sure they know where you are, please. 
Brother Ryan and uh, you know what, praise team's going to come at this time and uh, let's stand together, let's worship the Lord together singing these songs. <clears throat>
they might get that taken care of, Lord. We thank you just for being able to have church services, for being able to meet together in fellowship and to learn, Lord. And I do pray that you just be with Pastor as he teaches us what you've given him to give to us, Lord. And again, we pray that if anyone needs to make a decision today, that they would not wait, uh, but they would make that decision uh, before they leave this place. We thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I've been privileged to have my family visit uh, this week, and, uh, and so I've asked my father if he would sing for us, so after you. I appreciate it. It's been good to be here. Uh, we get out here maybe once a year, uh, maybe, and so we appreciate y'all's hospitality. appreciate you loving our kids. We appreciate that very much. Um, the Lord laid this on my heart a lot, about a week or so ago before Ryan even asked me to sing because I knew it was coming. Um, and so I've been praying about it, and Lord laid it on my heart. And then when I saw what the pastor was going to be preaching on, I thought, well, this is just a God thing. The uh, song was written back in the mid-'80s. Um, it's a, a great song, um, probably as applicable today as it ever has been. Um, if you remember back in Matthew chapter 25, there, Christ told the, the parable of the ten virgins. Well, there around verse 5 or 6, he says, then at the midnight cry, or at the midnight there was a great cry made. And later on in verse 13, it says, Watch therefore, for you know not whether, whether the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And so this song has a tendency to, to follow that line, that thought, way of thinking. Midnight cry, and I hope it will be a blessing to you. Of a mighty rushing wind And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet As Gabriel sounds the call At the midnight cry, we'll be going home when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise. the midnight cry when Jesus comes again I look around me 
I see prophecies fulfilling And the signs of the times They're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father He says, son, go get my children. And at the midnight cry, the bride of Christ will rise. When Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children, Dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air, and then those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight. again and then those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again midnight cry when Jesus comes again when Jesus comes again praise the Lord I've already thought about that. <laughs> that makes you just want to shout. Amen. Woo! Y'all, it is so close. Yes, so close. Nearer and nearer. Oh, what a day. No. Oh, what a wonderful day. It's going to be. Turn in your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3, if you would, please. 2 Peter chapter 3. I want to do it. Caleb, good to see you all. So good to see you and serve. Our church is praying for you, man. I know you were here last week. I didn't put two and two together. But God bless you, buddy. Love you, praying for you. And um, if there's any, ever anything that we can do for you, man, we love you. 2 Peter chapter number 3. It's been said... Ryan and I joke about this, and now having his father here, and Brother Moses, good to have y'all. We're trying our best, because Lily can't do it, but we're doing our best to keep your son in line, but God bless y'all. Thank you, thank you for being here today. We love you. Um, we joke about it. There's two things that people say, like two of the most useless things in a Baptist church. You know one of them. You two know one of them. The third stanza in a hymn. Because we do the first, second, and last. Brother Butler, you know, you might as well rarely do, and it's rare. It's like, oh, we're singing all four verses? The second thing, except for Brother Patrick and my family and Bryant's, the front row. It's almost useless. Right, Brother Purdue? <laughs> it's true. But then there's something that I would like to add, and I've said this before, and I think even there's been times that I've talked about this with Brother Brian through the years, to say the third most useless thing would be, and Adrian's here, I think we've even talked about it, announcements. A lot of times when you come to do announcements, it's like, 
People just tune out. <laughs> don't act like you don't. Because it never fails. We will announce and announce and announce and announce. And then something happens, and it's like, well, I never knew that was going to happen. <laughs> right, Brother Brian? You can at least nod your head with me. <laughs> well, it's been, it was in, now we're not doing the bulletin. It's been in the bulletin. It's up on the screen. Well, man, I wish I would have just announced that sometime. <laughs> Sometimes here's my opinion. You just tune out. Sometimes we announce things so many times. Oh, here they go again. Pastor's talking about that again. And then you're just like, oh, I'm not going to listen to any announcement. Or Brother Brian doing it. I'm not going to. And you just kind of tune us out. I've heard that before. I, I know what's going I know all about the Fall Festival. I know all about that outreach. I know all about this. I know they need workers in kids' ministries. I know that they're starting. I know. And you just tune us out. Oh, there it goes again. What a dangerous thing. Not for the announcements. But what a dangerous, dangerous thought. Today's message is on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there are some people seated in here right now. Just that thought. I've heard that before. I've heard just about every message, probably much better than what I'm going to do today. I've heard all kinds of messages on the second coming of Christ. And you just tune out. I've heard that so many times. And, and you know what? People have sang the midnight cry for years, my entire life. And the preacher gets up and says, oh, we're closer than ever before. Here we still are years later. I tell you what, we're nearer Amen. than ever before. And if that's your mentality of, well, it's never happened, just tuning me out. Soon, very soon, you're going to have to face the fact that this message is a reality. So don't tune me out. And it's not tuning me out. Don't tune God out. Because what I'm fixing to say, y'all, it's not my message. It's God's message. And it's what the Lord has for every single one of you here, every person that's watching online, it's by God's design for this to be preached on this day. Don't tune God out. Because very soon, Jesus is coming. And it'll be too late to tune in. It's now. Right now. You look around. I got a text, and the wheelers are not able to attend right now. They texted me right before church, and y'all out in California, what's going on? It's heartbreaking. I, my heart breaks for my fellow co-laborers, fellow servants, and also for my fellow Christians. There was a church that their grandchildren attend that was served cease and desist papers, and basically being told, I mean, and it's happening all over California. Y'all, so easily it can happen all across America. And it, it, Brother Moses and I were talking before the church. It's not just about a president. It's about all people who are making these decisions from, right. y'all, we've seen from city council all the way up how important it is for us. And that's not, I don't know why I'm talking about this today, but how important it is for us to be involved and in getting out and voting right. and being a part of what's happening. That's right. Tell it. We have to. From the, it's, not this last, it's not that this last election was insignificant when we voted just this past week. Every single one of them are significant. When you think of the second coming of Christ, and some of you talked about, like, some of y'all are experts. I do not claim to be an expert on the second coming of Christ, but I know what God's word says. Some of you go to conferences, some of you host conferences, some of you know so much more. But I do know that God's word has a lot to say about it. That's right. If we stop for a moment, so it's the second coming, so let's, what about the first coming? The Old Testament had a lot to say about the first coming. And, and, and when in the Old Testament, throughout the Old Testament, there was prophecy about how Jesus was going to be born. And it talked about exactly where Jesus was going to be born. It, 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 it tells us prophecy told when he was born, it even talked about where he was going to go, what he was going to do. It even gave characteristics of who he was going to be. 
And you stop and think about how that was prophesied throughout the Old Testament, and people heard it, and heard it, and heard it, and heard it. And some evidently began to tune it out. Because as much as was prophesied, and thinking of Daniel where you could trace almost to the, to, the, to the day. But they still were amazed. They were shocked. They weren't necessarily out there waiting, anticipating that first coming. And I look at it and I'm like, and, and again, if we go through all those prophecies in the Old Testament, man, they should have been there. They should have been anticipating. They should have been expecting. How much clearer could it have been with Jesus is coming, the Messiah is coming. He's going to be born. Where he's going to be born? What he's going to, why were they shocked? So then we come to the second coming, which the Bible talks even more about than the first coming. Old Testament New Testament talks about a second coming. 315 times in the New Testament references to the second coming. I think it's pretty important that we pay attention, that we look, we see what God's Word has to say. And Peter, in this letter, it's... And this, it's, his, it's the last chapter of his last epistle. It's at the very end of what he has to say. I view it, and I'll talk more about this in a minute, but it's like his last words. If it were today, sitting down at a computer, typing, writing a book, but before you close the screen of the computer... Before you put down the pen, before you push send, Peter says, man, there's one last thing i got to tell them about. There's one more thing that I've got to make sure that they remember. Look there in 2 Peter chapter 3. In verse number 1, he starts by just simply saying this second epistle Obviously, the first epistle is 1 Peter, so he shared some things. He comes to this second epistle, and it says, Beloved, he's, y'all, it's people that he loves, people that he's concerned about, that he cares for. And even for us, y'all, as we receive this, this is like the last words that Peter would want to share with us. But it's not just Peter. The Holy Spirit spoke through Peter. The last thing the Holy Spirit wanted Peter to say, so the for the last thing that the Holy Spirit wanted Peter to be able to convey to us. It's important. So he says, beloved, he says, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance. He says, I'm here at the end of my writing, but man, I'm going to do something here at the end, and I want to stir up your minds. I want to be able to cause your minds to have pure thoughts and to know exactly what you what." the truth about what he's fixing to share. And he says, I want to bring this to remembrance. It's like, I know you have heard this before, but don't tune me out. And verse 2 talks even further about that. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before. He says, this isn't something new. I'm not the first one to tell you about this. Um, this is a message that's been given before. Not only is it, it's been given over and over and over. He says, and I want you to be mindful of these words that were spoken before, before him, but notice who he says they were spoken by. By the holy prophets. God spoke through those prophets. Amen. So he says, you know, if you question him and me, and if y'all question me, and because I'm giving you the same message that Peter gave, and that Peter says, okay, I want to bring this to your remembrance, and y'all, if this was the last message that I was able to preach, um, I want y'all to be able to be straight on this topic. And it's not just about me, and it's not a new message, but I just want to remind y'all, and to bring, before we get into the rest of this chapter, I want to remind you that the holy prophets, that the Old Testament prophets told and talked about this. And they received their message directly from God. Oh, you want to pay attention to something. 
<laughs> you think that there's something that you need, that we need to remember? It's what God has to say. So he says, I want you to remember that the, the holy prophets spoke of this and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. He says, not only did the, um, did the Old Testament prophets talk about this and they received a word from God, but we, the apostles, we've been right here with you. But who did they walk with? Jesus. And they heard Jesus teach. They knew his teachings. And he says, we walked with him. We know what he had to say. So it's not only the Old Testament prophets. You know us. And you've heard it from us over and over and over. But, man, I want to remind you of this in my last words. I want to make sure that you get this. And he shares over these next 11 verses three thoughts that I would like to give to you today. Three things concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 10, and we'll get to this in a minute, but there's a phrase that is the key phrase of this chapter. But the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, as he's speaking here, is talking about end-time events. And he says, speaking of this day, the day of the Lord, and we're going to talk more about it in a minute, but he says that it will come. Oh, what a wonderful day it will be. There's a hymn. It's in your hymn book, but the words are up on the screen. I'm not going to sing it, but I'd like for us to read it. And think about these words, y'all. Marvelous message we bring. Can I tell you today, this message that I'm about to preach, it's not marvelous because of me. It's marvelous because of the day of the Lord, Amen. it will come. Amen. Marvelous message we bring. Yes. It's not just me. Hey, guess what, y'all? When you go to your family and your friends and your co-workers, marvelous message we bring. Amen. Right. Glorious carol we sing. You talk, and man, what an awesome song. And we get, y'all, it should be that as we go out every single day of our life, there, it's glorious carol that we sing. It's like, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's coming. And we want everybody to know. Amen. So it's a message that we share, that we give. It's a song that we sing. Wonderful. It's not my song. It's not my message. But it's wonderful word of the king. What is it? Jesus Amen. is coming again. And the second verse says this. And it's talking about how creation speaks about this as well and can attest to it. So every day in our lives when we look around, there's evidence Forest and flower exclaim. Try to even just imagine that. What, a, what an imagination of this hymn writer. You just look around, y'all. Forest and flower exclaim. Mountain and meadow, the same. All around. The er all earth and heaven proclaim. Everywhere you look. All and is it not true that everywhere we look today, there's a message. Jesus is coming again. And then the third verse, standing before him, and just imagine what this is going to be like, standing before him at last, trial and trouble, praise God, all past. Crowns at his feet we will cast. Wait, man, we can get so excited about that. Why? Because Jesus is coming again. Amen. And that chorus, coming again. Oh, he's coming again. I don't know when, maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, maybe soon. But I do know this, he's coming again. Y'all, he is coming again. Oh, what a wonderful day it will be. Jesus is coming again. Yes, sir. Amen. The day of the Lord. We look at it, we rejoice, we get all excited. But y'all, the reality is, for some people, it's not very exciting. Not exciting at all. Because number one, scoffers will deny it. Look with me in verse number three. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. 
Y'all, we're, we say that we're living in the last days, and Brother Bill shared a little bit about it last week, and I'm not going to get it all into this, but just thinking of the last days, and we're living in the last days, and you look and see the events and Old Testament prophecy, the things that are going on, things that are happening, prophecy being revealed. We look and we see about the, the peace agreement um, uh, um, with the United Arab Emirates. We look and see this week with what's going on with Sudan and other countries that maybe, y'all, you look around um, and, and we see we are living in the last days. You see these events um, um, unfolding right before our eyes. But then as these things are happening, he says here, there shall come, uh, excuse me, there shall come in the last days scoffers. There, in my lifetime, there are more scoffers today than ever before. There's more people against God's word than ever before. There's more people against us than ever before. Y'all, the day of the Lord will come. Amen. In the last days, there's going to be scoffers. And, these scoffer, and scoffers are people that are naysayers. They're critics. They kind of laugh at, make fun of. My goodness, there's a lot of scoffers today. There's a lot of people that try to make fun of us, that are critical of us. Of Christians, there's a lot of naysayers, and we say, You better pay attention because Jesus is coming. Amen. He goes on there and he says that um, in, in the last days there's scoffers, and he says, Walking after their own lust and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Notice what, he, what happens here. They start doing some questions. Um, he's talking about these scoffers, and like I said just a moment ago, that there's people that are like, well, I've lived my entire life and nothing's really changed. That's what he's talking about here. So notice what he says, first of all, about these scoffers. He talks about the dishonesty, the dishonesty of their argument. He says, as he's talking about them, at the end of verse 4, it says, as they were from the beginning of the creation. They look and they say, well, as we look around, Things are exactly the way that they were but since creation. Nothing's ever changed. That's what they're saying. Nothing has changed since creation. The world is the same. But then notice what he says in verse number five. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in, in the water. He says, that, so they're ignorant about this and this argument that the earth is the same as it was since creation. He's like, well, what about the flood? What about the flood that came and they acknowledge creation, so they're not atheist, so they're, they're, they're actually acknowledging that there's a God, but he says, well, what about the flood and the flood when it came and it covered the earth? And so their argument that things since the beginning of creation that they've never changed, he says, consider the flood whereby, verse number six, the world that was, uh, excuse me, that then was being overflowed with water perished. The world was, it perished the way that it was known. When water came and covered the earth, he says, it completely changed earth. You can't say nothing has ever changed. And that was God's judgment on the earth. That was God's cleansing of the earth. But the heavens and the earth, verse number seven, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved into fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Not only are they ignorant, they were willingly ignorant, is what it says. There's some things, y'all, I, I, I'm not an expert on much. I'm an expert on food, and that's about it. <laughs> I'm not an expert on computers. I'm thankful that there's people around me that know about them. I'm, I'm not. Technology is just not my thing. I, he says there's some that are willingly, speaking of them, and that they, the earth hasn't changed since creation, they are willingly ignorant. They are, by choice, they are choosing to ignore truth. They're choosing to remain ignorant. 
because it's right in front of their eyes where the earth was, just, was um, about the flood and about the cleansing that had. He says, it's right. You're just willingly ignorant about this. You're choosing to be ignorant. You're choosing to mock, to be critical. You're choosing to be a naysayer. Your argument, it's not, it, it can't even stand. Y'all, there's still scoffers today. If we were to try and allow them to share their, their na- their, as they're naysaying and being critical of the second coming of Christ, there's people around us, they're just willingly ignorant of this topic. They don't want to know about it. And the reason is, the second thing, the motivation of their argument. It goes back up to verse number three at the end. Walking after their own lust. The reason that they're trying to say, oh, it's always been like this and things haven't changed. The earth, it, the earth has always been this way since creation. My life, nothing's happened. Nothing's ever going to happen. We've heard this over and over and over. But their motivation is for their own lust. They are enjoying their life. It's all about what they want. It's all about just having fun living the lives that they want to live. And the thought of the second coming of the day of the Lord going to come, judgment coming, ah, it's never going to happen. We've heard that over and over and over. Things are the same as they were when I was a teenager, same as I was a kid. I've heard this story over and over and over. And they're like, ah, not going to happen. And they go and live the life, their lives the way they want to. The thought of God's judgment upon them, they don't want to accept it. They don't want to acknowledge it. No, you can't change the fact that when the rapture happens, the day of the Lord comes, there's a judgment. You can't change that fact. Right. It's, if you don't like it, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen. If you, you think, well, um, not in my life, it's going to happen. God's word said it's going to. Amen. So as you stop and as we stop and think about it, and, and if we're just saying, if we're going to be willingly ignorant of the fact that the day of the Lord is, will come, and y'all, we're getting closer and closer to the second coming of Christ, and you're saying, oh, no, it's not going to happen, you, we need to search ourselves and see, okay, is it that we're choosing this because of our own lust, because We're wanting just to keep on living life the way that we want to live. There's many scoffers. There's many people that are like that today. There's a lot of Christians that are that way. The next thing that he talks about, he he gives an answer to their argument. And the answers that he gives to them, (laughs) the first thing that he does, he gives the plan of God for future judgment. He gives the plan of God for future judgment. Look at verse number seven. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Remember your, their initial argument, it's just the same. He says, well, no, the earth's been destroyed by the flood, by water. The judgment came, the cleansing came. And God gave a promise then that he would never destroy the earth again by water. He gave us the sign of the rainbow. But we were told that the earth was going to be judged by fire. And in these verses, he's talking about a great cleansing, the earth as we know it. Consumed in a fire. It's God's judgment. With the flood, there was a sanctuary, the ark, that Noah's family was able to get into and escape or be saved from that judgment. When fire comes, there's not going to be an ark. It's not going to be a little safe place here on earth. The rapture takes place. 
God's judgment comes, y'all. This earth cleansing, purification. We have to stop and ask ourselves, am I ready for that? And he tells them too is in, in, in this, God's not bound by human time frames. Because they're like, well, my, you know, my whole life nothing's happened. And then we can go back and say, you know, they've been saying this for thousands of years. Psalm 90 and verse 4 speaks of this, and it talks about, and it says, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. So if the earth is 6,000, let's just say 6,000 years old. That's six days to God. It's not a long time. And we look at it and we think, well, my goodness, it's been six, it's gone for this long and 6,000 years and nothing's happened. Y'all, for God, it's just been six days. He's not held to our same time frame. It has not been long to him. We look in our lives, like, my goodness, my grandfather thought that it was going to happen during their lifetime. I go, in, in, in the New Testament, they thought that it was going to happen. And their people for years, for centuries, have thought that the second coming was going to happen in their lives. And it hasn't happened, it hasn't happened, it hasn't happened. And if we're not careful, we just tune out and become like a scoffer. And we'll get to the point where we say, well, it's not going to happen in my life, but my goodness, it's just the same as it's always been. Man, how much longer are we going to wait? Peter says, it's coming. Verse 10, the day of the Lord will come. Scoffers, and there are so many, they deny it. But scriptures, number two, declare it. The Bible declares it. Verse number 10, it says... But the day of the Lord will. That is an emphatic action. It's not maybe, possibly, hopefully. It will. The day of the Lord will come. Scripture says that it's going to happen. Yes, there's scoffers all around us. And there's people that are saying, oh, it hasn't happened. It's been thousands of years. It hasn't happened. Nothing's going on in my lifetime. So the question comes for every one of us right now. Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the scoffers? Or are you going to believe the scriptures? That's what it boils down to. And the people that we talk to, if we go out and just to take that hymn, man, if we go out and give the message to the world and we tell them that Jesus is coming again, and we go out and, man, we're singing and we have that in our soul and our spirit, there's that joy, because what it is for us, y'all, it's not that I, I don't dread it. It's my blessed hope. It's what I long for, what I'm looking forward to. And when we go out and other people see that, and we give that message and we tell them that Jesus is coming again. I don't care if they scoff, if they're a naysayer, if they're going to be critical of me. God's word says it's going to happen. And I believe God's word. Because let's just stop for just a second. This is the second coming. Let's just go back to the first coming and show in Scripture what God's word said. And if somebody does not believe and they're being critical of the second coming, let's go back to the first coming. God's word said, and look what happened. And people were caught off guard then and not expecting, not anticipating then. And the same thing's happening today where people are not anticipating. They're not expecting. It's almost like the scoffer's voice is winning over, is having more of an impact. But God's word, here's what it says. First thing that it noticed about this, that when the day of the Lord comes, it will be unexpected by the world. It's going to come as a thief in the night. The world's not going to, expect. y'all, again, <laughs> you say, how's that going to happen? Well, think of the first coming. It's going to come, he's going to come as a thief in the night. And as Peter wrote this through the leading of the Holy Spirit, 
I believe that, and again, because he told them, the Old Testament, the holy uh, prophets spoke of this. He talked about them as the apostles who have taught and preached this. I believe he's reflecting back in Luke chapter 12 where he was with Jesus. And he heard what Jesus has to say. Luke chapter 12, verses 39 and 40, it says, And this know that if the goodman of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Peter knows and thinking what Jesus had said, and he's thinking of the second coming, and he's like, oh, it's going to come just like what Jesus said. He's going to come just like what the Scriptures say. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Scriptures say that he's coming. We can't put an exact, maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, maybe soon. But y'all... As I look and see what his word says in the Old Testament, what his word says in the New Testament, the day of the Lord will come. Amen. And it's soon. Yes, sir. Scriptures declare it. Do we really believe them? Do we really believe it will be unexpected by the world? It should not be unexpected by us. That's right. Amen. We should be anticipating. Amen. We should be expecting. Not only is it going to be unexpected by the world, the second thing is it's going to be unparalleled in magnitude. Unparalleled in magnitude. He says, that, uh, it's come as a thief in the night uh, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And notice this, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. There is coming um, this through the fire, talking about the elements, like the compounds, the earth as we see it, as we know it, the creation that is here, it's going to be purged, it's going to be cleansed, it's coming. And he says it's going to be done by fire. And it's going to come and it's going to be, um, the purging is going to happen, the cleansing is going to happen, the creation as we know it's going to be gone. This is going to happen in an unparalleled way where you've never seen anything like this. Scripture declares it. But not only that, the saints, excuse me, the saints desire it. Verse number 11, seeing then, that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be? Accepting the fact that the day of the Lord will come. Y'all, the rapture is going to happen. Jesus is coming again. Oh, what a wonderful day it's going to be. So accepting that. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What should our attitude be? What should our conduct be? How should we be living? You know, there's many Christians that don't look forward to it. Many professing Christians. But it's your blessed hope. Amen. It's what we're looking forward to. Amen. It ought to excite us. Yes, sir. We should be saying hallelujah. We should be saying, come quickly, yes, sir. Lord Jesus. Oh, he goes on and there it says, what, and, and what should be happening? Because, y'all, as a Christian, we should be rapture ready. Yes. And if we're rapture ready, he talks here about, Rapture-ready saints, they are, we should be aware and prepared. Yes, sir. We're aware that He's coming, that the day of the Lord will come, and we are prepared to go with last week because we know that we know, that we know, that we know that we've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. So as we know that, and the fact that Scriptures say, they declare that Jesus is coming, they declare that the day of the Lord will come. They declare, y'all, 
judgment is coming. Accept the reality, judgment is coming. And it should get our attention, it should burden us for the people that don't know Him as their Savior, that don't know that they know, that they know where they're going to spend eternity. We should be going out and giving them this message. We should go out and say, look, y'all, don't be a scoffer any longer. Yes, there's more and more that are questioning it. Yes, you've heard this message so many times. Yes, you know, you can say that nothing. Wait a minute, there's a lot happening in your lifetime. We should not choose to be willingly ignorant there's stuff happening all around us. And we should be going out Amen. and saying, I am looking forward. I desire. I'm fully aware. I'm fully prepared. The next couple verses, those rapture-ready saints, they're looking for and they are looking forward for it to happen. Verse 12, looking for... <laughs> oh. That song again, man, you can just look out in the eastern sky. It's almost like they're tuning up the trumpet. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens shall be on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, our hope, look for new heavens and a new earth, Wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Last week, if you were here, we know I'm a Christian. I've accepted. I desire. I desire. Look for his coming. I am fully aware that he's coming again. I am prepared. I see things that are happening. I know that it's going to be the day of the Lord is, will come very soon. But I know, I believe, there's some that are even in here today. We could go back to last week. I truly believe there's some that still don't know where they would spend eternity. And when you hear messages like this, you tune them out because you do not want to accept the fact that there is a day of judgment that's coming. You want to just keep living your life the way that you want to. You do not have long. And that's a message from God that I share with you out of love. Open your eyes and look around at what's happening. Yes, sir. The day of the Lord will come. Yes. Accept it into your life. Are you ready to be judged by God? Amen. That means, have you accepted His Son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior? Amen. If you haven't, in just a moment, we're going to have a verse of invitation. Man, I beg, I plead with you to come. Just come and say, Pastor, I need to accept Jesus as my Savior today. Come do it. Christian, maybe you have not truly desired the second coming. Maybe you truly, you've been, I just want to do this, or I, you know, I, I just, no, come quickly. I'm ready to go home. Amen. I'm ready to go home. Glory to God. But there's a message that I possess the gospel. That until he comes, I know that I need to be telling people. That's right. Come on, preach it. Because my heart breaks for you. Yes. Anybody here and anybody out there yes, sir. that just scoffs at the idea and says, ah, it's not going to happen. It is soon. So, Christian, when's the last time you told somebody? You may not use the phrase, the day of the Lord will come, but when was the last time you said, Jesus is coming again? Oh, what a wonderful day it will be. You say that to somebody and listen for their response. Can they also proclaim and testify? Oh, what a day it will, wonderful day it will be. Or, you just add, opened an absolutely incredible door of opportunity to say, oh, 
it's not a wonderful day for you? You're not looking forward to the second coming of Christ? And then we get to share the gospel. Amen. Yes, sir. People see what's going on. People are concerned with what's happening in our world today. But I'm fearful that there's not enough Christians going out and giving the message. The day of the Lord will come. If we believe it, we're going to go tell somebody. If we believe it, we're going to go warn people. It's coming. Maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, maybe soon. But I do believe this. It's gonna, I believe we're the generation. I don't know the day, but I truly believe according to Scripture, we're the generation. I, more than ever, we're going to see it in our lifetime. It's our blessed hope. Amen. Let's go tell people. Yes, sir. Preach it. And if you're here, and it's not yet your blessed hope, you're concerned. It f- brings fear. Come see me. Amen. Come say, Pastor, I need to be saved. I need to accept Christ as my Savior. Would you join me in standing with your heads bowed and your eyes closed? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Y'all, I just, simple invitation. If you're here and do not know Christ as your Savior, I plead with you to come. The day of the Lord will come. The second coming. Jesus is coming again. Oh, what a wonderful day it's going to be for those of us who know Him, who have accepted Him as their Lord and Savior. But for others, it's not going to be a wonderful day. Do not, my encouragement, my plea with you would be Stop living for yourself in the lust of your own selfish lust. It's time to turn from those ways. To surrender yourself, your life, and give your life to God. So, Lord, no longer it is about me and my lust. I choose Jesus. I understand that the sin in my life, that judgment comes eternal torment in hell. But I choose Jesus today so I can have a blessed hope that when He comes, I'll spend eternity with Him in heaven. Today, if that's you, I invite you to come. And Christian, maybe lead the way. Have you been going and giving the message? Have you been going and singing? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, what a wonderful day that's going to be. Have you been going out and sharing and showing to other people and encouraging them to look all around them, just to look at what's happening. The day of the Lord is coming. Lord, we ask for your blessing on this time of prayer and this time of invitation. Lord, if there's one here today that does not know you as their Savior, I plead and beg with them that they would come as you're calling them to salvation today. Lord, the the end is near. I can't give a date, I can't give a time, but I know according to what your word says that it's soon. Lord, there may be people that have scoffed at this and mocked this and been critical of this and been a naysayer for years, but Lord, that today that you've shown them through your word that it's coming. And maybe there's been Christ, there's Christians that are here and it's a message that we've heard over and over and over. And Lord, that we tune out and we think, well, that hasn't really happened in my lifetime. And I continue to hear this message. But Lord, today you brought to our remembrance that the day of the Lord will come. And Lord, as we look and see the things that are happening around us, that it should cause us, Lord, to, it should burden us to go and to tell other people that it's soon. It should um, it help us to have passion to go and, Lord, to live the life, that godly, holy life, which is the life that we should be living in these last days. Lord, that lifestyle that would point people to you, that would cause them to question what's going on in their own life and the lifestyle that they're choosing. So, Lord, we just ask for your blessing in this time of invitation. Lord, that as you call to salvation, that they would come.
that Christians would come. And maybe it's just a thank you for our salvation, a thank you for that blessed hope. But Lord, as well, maybe you're laying somebody on our heart that we need to come and pray for, that we would go and share this message with, that we would go and maybe there's a scoffer that we're aware of, that we would go and just tell them, look what God's word says. The day's coming. Lord, if you're leading one to become a member of West Orlando Baptist Church, we would welcome them with open arms. We ask for your blessing on this time of prayer and invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. As Miss Penny plays, as the Lord leads with your heads bowed, if you would come, come as he calls to salvation. Come as maybe as he has brought some things to your remembrance. You come as the Lord leads today. bless y'all and uh, it's good to, again good to see y'all and uh, good to have some guests with us today as well thank you for being here on your way out there's we're not doing normal uh, we would hand you some little uh, packets of information about our church there's some tables out in the lobby on your way out um, little there's some little folders that say welcome invite you encourage you if you'd like to take one of those with you there's information about our church there's also a card in there an information card that we would love to have some information about you um, so if you would fill that out um, we would appreciate it. You can give that back to me. I'll hang out here up front or you can just drop it by sometime. Um, but uh, again, thank you for being here today. Exciting decision to share with you. Uh, it's good to have the Cirillo family. They've been visiting our church um, for several months. I can't remember exactly how long, but um, before COVID, I know things were, we were getting to know each other and fellowship and through COVID, it's been an interesting time. Appreciate y'all's faithfulness as well and your involvement that the Cirillo's come today to join membership of West Orlando Baptist Church by statement of faith. All of you uh, receiving them as stated, let it be known by saying amen. 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 Let's give them a hand as well. Precious family, and uh, I told Hector, look forward to getting to know y'all better and serving the Lord with y'all. Um, and we're not going to do normal, come around, shake their hands. I, I've been telling people that have gotten saved um, and also joined our church, uh, people that going back to Brother Bobby, that first person that, accept, uh, that um, joined our church during COVID that very first week. When we get done with COVID and we're back to normal, 
we're going to have like a big party out in the lobby with all of you that have joined the church and that have accepted Christ as Savior. Uh, so right now it's from Bobby forward, okay, um, that we're going to do this. But we're happy to have y'all. And uh, even though we may not come by and shake your hand, uh, let's do this. Let's give them all a high five, all right? And Brother Keith gave him like a double hallelujah back there. Um, but uh, happy to have y'all. Let's all bow together. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Again, on your way out, there'll be ushers at the door if you would like to give an offering. Also, if you would like to give towards Elizabeth Purdue um, and the purchase of that property, just drop in the offering plate. If you have any questions, I'll stay up front. Come see me. Let's bow together. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Lord, we love you and thank you again for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the promise in your word that the day of the Lord will come. And we thank you that we know that soon and very soon that Jesus is coming again. And Lord, that should excite us. It should cause us as Christians, as believers, Lord, it should bring a peace to us. It should bring a difference in our life than what others how others are reacting and acting during this time. It should cause us, Lord, to be excited as we see these the prophecies being fulfilled. And Lord, it should cause us to be telling people, oh, what a wonderful time, what a wonderful day. Jesus is coming. Lord, help us as we leave this place to be that influence, to be that difference, to be the, the people of peace in this world that where there's not that peace, where there's tor turmoil, um, where there's scoffers. Help us to stand. And uh, Lord, we ask for your blessing as we leave. Help us to be the salt and the light that you have commanded us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Have a great day. Lord, we'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>